Uh, let's go Chicago Bears at the Detroit Lions. What's the spread here? Fields Lions back. seven and a half. Justin Fields is back. Mm-hmm. And they're still seven and a half point dogs. Still seven and a half point underdogs. Uh, so broken thumb. Did the line move when he came back? I'm not sure. That would be a that would be a tough blow to the ego. Fields is better than Bajan. <laughs> it, 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 does the man in Vegas agree though? Justin that's, Fields that's is question. better than the, better than Tyson Bajan. Man, I don't know. That's so uh, Lions by seven and a half. It's in the dome. Lions are gonna come back again in the dome Thanksgiving to play Green Bay next week. So back to back home games here for the Lions. Coming off their big win against the Chargers that we just talked about. What are you looking for in this one? So the line has moved from 10. Yeah, there you go. 10 to 7.5. Yeah, Fields, Fields is way better. Way better. He's better than Tyson Bajan. Yeah. I mean, before, remember Fields' season here. The beginning of the year, we were sitting here pulling our hair out. Like, why does this look like early last year where Fields couldn't complete a pass, was getting sacked, and all the good plays were just scrambles? It was a mm. couple weeks of that stuff missing open receivers and then he hit i mean then he ran into the bad broncos team where he had you know 16 for 16 in the first half until he threw a hail mary um so that might have been you know a fluky data point given the way the broncos were playing at that time fields had a nice game against washington on thursday night football he had played better it was a lot like last year where a corner was turned not to like elite level or anything but yeah he had like good enough he had like two games where things looked like they were they turned around and we're on the right track again, and then we got hurt and we didn't get to see anything else. Um, so, yeah, I mean, if, if that's what you're going to get, if Fields actually remembered how to pass the ball and put the ball in the air and not ignore wide-open receivers down the field, then, yeah, sure, he's way better, um, particularly when you factor in <laughs> yeah. the athleticism, the scrambling, which is, you know, a huge part of his game. So, yeah, I mean, like, I'm, I'm intrigued to see now he's back. What are we going to get? Are we going to get a halfway decent version of Justin Fields? Like, also – Okay, he's been limited with a thumb injury. Like, it, the injury that he's had has been very specific in terms of there's not a lot he can have been doing from a – there's not much practicing he can't have been doing, right, because he can't hold the football. So – but, like, he's had time not in the weekly grind of game plan, game plan, game plan for the next opposition. What has he been doing to try and make himself better as a quarterback in addition to just getting his thumb – to the point where he can hold a football again. Has he actually worked on anything during this time and, and tried to reset what was going wrong? Um, but the Lions are a tough team now. I just want to give a quick comparison between Fields and Bajent because they, they played football in the complete opposite style. Right. Um, first off, Justin Fields is completing passes beyond 20 yards at a higher rate than he's completing intermediate passes at 10 to 19 yards. Um, so the deep ball has been better for Fields than just shorter passes, which is a little bit crazy. Um, Fields has three times higher big-time thrill rate and a third of the turnover-worthy plays is Tyson Bajan, which might think, oh, so Bajan's putting the ball in harm's way, but also playing this super conservative, shorter pass game, uh, lower yards per attempt. But Bajan was also never taking sacks, right? Right, And we know the Fields narrative was, oh, the offensive line's terrible. And we, the last two years, we're like, actually, it's a little better than it looks like with Fields. Um, and not just uh, pressure rate, but the percentage of pressures that turn into sacks. Bajan was one of the league's best. Fields, one of the league's worst. So completely different style quarterbacks. And I know it's not as simple as this, but if Fields could steal, right? We said, <laughs> oh, just watch Bajan film. Is what Chris was kind of right. talking about a few he was weeks making. ago. There are elements of take the short stuff when it's there, right? Avoid the negative plays with the sacks, but keep your aggressiveness at the right times. That's the balance I think Fields is looking for. Yeah, I mean, it, there are a lot of there are a lot of elements to Bajan's game that Fields needs. Like that, that I think was the underlying point that Chris was making on that broadcast is. Like, there are things that Bajan does very well that Fields is atrocious at. And if he could just take all of those to his game, he'd be a really good quarterback. Like, the, the fact that Bajan's sack rate is absurdly low, given how not great at football he is so far. Like, he's been incredibly good at that. And that's not an easy thing for a young quarterback to be good at. So there is elements to that that if Fields could just steal a little bit in pieces of that here or there, he would be moving in the right direction by leaps and bounds. Um I mean, really, I think the biggest thing, though, is it's it's the other side of the ball. Like, can the can the Bears slow down Detroit at all? Yeah. They, so the Bears, I was actually surprised when I saw this number. Number two uh, run defense, EPA per play, against the Bears. Um, there was a game a few weeks ago where the Lions did have to become one-dimensional. They didn't have David Montgomery. They had um, – what's his name? 
Craig uh, Reynolds running the ball against Tampa Bay. They couldn't run, but Goff just dropped back 44, 45 times, and they were great. Goff's now our number one graded quarterback. He's playing incredibly efficient football. Uh, there's a chance if the Bears run defense plays to that capability, can they make Detroit one-dimensional in this game? I don't know if it matters. I'm right. just saying there is a chance that that happens. I just think the Lions are positioning themselves as that team I always describe as having multiple ways to win, and they, they'll they have the options in the passing game. But, yeah, I think the Bears could have some success, at least slowing down David Montgomery and Jameer Gibbs, perhaps. Possibly. I think they're harder to slow down when you have – you know those guys collectively as opposed to one guy that you just need to take away like Gibbs and Montgomery is more difficult than just uh, either one of them by themselves uh, and certainly Greg Reynolds but yeah even if you do force them to be one-dimensional I think it's a pretty good dimension to have yeah I definitely like the Lions passing attack I think they'll have success against this Bears back seven and their pass rush so seven and a half here man it is it is one of those things I always hate picking the Bears because you just don't know when Justin Fields is going to have a 60-yard touchdown run Right, like last year. He screwed a lot of our picks last year because you didn't know when he was going to be, you know, make superhuman plays. So where are you going with this? I'm going to go with the Lions, even though it's a big number. Yeah. I'm going to do the same. I'll take the Lions by 7.5, see what Fields looks like. Dude's playing for his job too, man. Uh, not his, not just his job, but he's playing for... I don't think he's even playing for this job. I think he's playing no, for he's, his next job. Yeah, he's playing for the rest of the league. I mean, there's, it is one of those things where I think the Bears will have somebody to pick that they'll want, and then someone else is going to want to have Justin Fields come into, the, come into their building. So. Right.